I'm sure we come across a lot of myths related to nutrition and dieting. So there are lots of questions that must be in your mind at present. Hi everyone, I'm Dietitian Nadia from Healing Hands Clinic and I welcome you all. So a lot of us want to lose a lot of weight in a short span of time. But is this healthy? Is skipping meals like skipping your breakfast, skipping lunch or skipping dinner a healthy option to lose weight? No. A lot of us want to lose a lot of weight in a short span of time. So we try to skip meals, we try, we try to skip breakfast or dinner. Is this healthy? No, it isn't. Because when you skip your meals, your body's metabolism starts to slow down. So automatically, your body doesn't go into calorie deficit, but it tries to save a lot of energy. So instead of making it easy for you to lose weight, it becomes more difficult. So whenever you want to lose weight, make sure you, don't, you do not skip your meals, try eating on time, do not keep long gaps between meals and um, you know, so I'd be, I'd be just suggested that you eat three main meals, so your breakfast, lunch and dinner and you also do not skip in between snacks. So carbohydrates are often viewed as a villain when it comes to dieting. So are carbs really that bad? No. We need to understand there are certain cells in the body that require glucose and carbs as a primary source of energy. So for example, your red blood cells and your brain cells require glucose to function well. So when you skip carbs, automatically your uh, body starts to react to it. You start, you start to feel very low, you have a lot of mood swings, you run into a lot of nervousness, anxiety, you do not get proper sleep, your quality of sleep begins to decline. You feel very hangry, so when you say hangry, it's basically you feel hungry, at the same time you start feeling very angry. So my suggestion to you would be that uh, do not cut your carbs completely. So your body on an average requires around 150 grams to 160 grams of carbohydrates daily to function optimally. So definitely uh, carbohydrates in the form of fruits is what I would suggest to you. Carbohydrates in the form of vegetables, whole grains, millets, pulses is what we recommend our patients. But if you, uh, you know, instead of eating a fruit, if you eat a fruit cream, uh, you know, fruits with a lot of cream over it, or if you, uh, you know, you're eating French fries, so these are options of carbohydrates that you need to avoid. There are options of carbohydrates in the form of bakery products, in the form of uh, refined sugar, table sugar, that are processed and packaged in frozen foods, a lot of uh, you know, these confectionaries and uh, donuts and these uh, frozen sweets and desserts. These are the kind of carbohydrates that you need to cut down. Eating after 8 can make you fat because uh, you know, I need to suggest that you finish your dinner when the sun sets because there's a circadian rhythm that you need to follow. Second thing, as the day ends, your metabolism starts to decline, it starts to slow down. So if you eat a late dinner, so whatever you've eaten gets converted to fats, gets converted to the adipose tissue in your body, you do not get sufficient adequate time to burn those calories. So ideally, we suggest our patients to finish their dinner before 7 p.m. Most of us require dietary supplements because if you compare uh, the kind of fertilizer, the kind of soil that is being used to cultivate and to grow food crops, the soil is depleted of all the nutrients. So definitely, definitely the food crops are not rich in those nutrients anymore. Secondly, our lifestyle has become, uh, you know, we, we eat the wrong foods at the wrong time with the wrong combinations. So there's, a, there's something called as a nutrient-to-nutrient -nutrient interaction. For example, if you're low on iron, if you're deficient, if you're iron deficient anemia, okay, so we highly suggest our patients to eat, if, if he's a non-vegetarian, we tell them to eat eggs. If uh, she's a vegetarian, we tell them to eat rajma and a lot of pulses, but most of us, we eat breakfast, uh, we eat eggs for breakfast combined with a lot of uh, tea in it. So we need to understand that tea has tannins which will not allow the iron from the eggs to get absorbed. Secondly, most of us are low on vitamin B12. Initially, milk used to be a very good source of vitamin B12 but now if you see the kind of processing done to milk, we boil milk so much by making curd, by making tea, to make pani. So vitamin B12 is volatile. It's, uh, you know, when you apply heat to vitamin B12, it gets lost. So definitely even if you're drinking milk, it's devoid, it's depleted of the vitamin B12. So it's very important that we understand the combinations, we understand the nutrient to nutrient interaction. We also need to understand drug to nutrient interaction. There are so many of us, you know, even if we suggest them iron, calcium supplementation, and they take it together at one time. 
we need to understand that iron and calcium compete with each other for absorption. So you need to take these two supplements at two different times of the day for maximum absorption. So it's highly suggested that even if you want to take a dietary supplement, you take it but under a proper medical professional supervision. So most of us want to lose a lot of weight in a short span of time. So we resort to crash diets, we, we resort to a lot of fat diets, a lot of VLCD or a low calorie diet. So let us understand what are VLCD diets, what are low calorie diets. So uh, VLCD diets cover around 800 to 1000 calories. Uh, low calorie diets cover around 1200 to 1400 calories. And uh, there are lots of fat diets that we are all aware of. So is this healthy? We need to understand one thing that if we are extremely obese or if we are overweight, there is still no need for you to follow these diets. So someone who's, who's already eating 3000 calories, we can, you should not be suggesting these patients uh, you know, 800 or 1000 calories to see a sudden weight loss because this can come with a lot of repercussions. So we always tell our patients to uh, you know, decrease the calorie intake slowly and gradually. So you start with uh, you know, uh, subtracting 500 calories, then you move on to 1000 calories. So this is very important because if you suddenly, uh, you know, if there's a drop in the calorie intake and other nutrients, first and foremost, the patient can suffer from bouts of uh, you know, anxiety, bouts of nervousness and depression. Secondly, there can be a lot of gallbladder stones being formed because when you're suddenly uh, eating very low calorie diets, what happens is that the fat stores in the liver start to break down. There's a lot of cholesterol being released into, the, uh, into your intestine, resulting in a lot of uh, you know, gallbladder stones. At the same time, when you're eating a very low calorie diet, your muscles in the body start to break down. So we all know that our muscles contain a lot of urine. So there's a lot of increase in the blood uric acid. So there is hyperuricemia that is seen. So these are all uh, you know, side effects of following a very low calorie diet. So my suggestion to you would be that if you have a medical condition for which you have to lose weight initially, so try uh, talking to a medical professional, see what can be done. But if you're trying it on your own, make sure that you, um, you, know, you, you start to slowly and gradually lose weight and you can and you're able to also keep this weight off because lots of patients you know for one two months they lose 10 kilos they lose 15 kilos but they they gain the same amount of weight or maybe they're gaining double the amount of weight that they have lost this is called as yo yo cycling so this can cause more trouble it can definitely you know you will lose a lot of confidence you start feeling guilty you'll feel uh, you start feeling a lot of shame and uh, you know with regards to the food with regards to your body image so make sure that when you want to lose weight, you lose not more than 2-3 kilos in a month and uh, you know, you're also able to keep it off. So ideally most of, uh, you know, most of the people, they feel that uh, if they drink uh, slimming or herbal teas, if they take fat burners, if they take weight loss supplements, it will help them in weight loss. We need to understand one thing that these are not FDA regulated in the first place. Second thing. Uh, even if uh, you know these supplements and these uh, teas and drinks have been uh, tested, they have been tested on a very small population. So maybe just 40 or 45 people have been included in the study and the study was done for a very short period of time. So definitely if a study is done for a very short period of time, it overlooks the long term side effects. So this is one thing, this is one reason you should not be including them in your diet. If we talk about fat burners and weight loss supplements, they come with a lot of compounds that can cause liver damage, that can cause cirrhosis and uh, lots of these can also cause cardiac arrhythmias where you have irregular heartbeats, it can increase your blood pressure, it can cause stroke, it can cause heart attacks. So these are some things that you will have to stay, you know, stay away from. Second thing, these supplements, uh, you know, the weight loss drinks and the slimming teas, they come with a lot of diuretics. Okay, so what do these diuretics do? They cause a lot of fluid and electrolyte imbalance in your body. So we need to understand if there's a lot of imbalance of fluids and electrolytes, it can affect your heart. So you can land up having heart attacks, you can have, land up having a high blood pressure, you can have uh, cardiac arrhythmias. At the same time, uh, you know, these diuretics will, will cause a lot of diarrhea. So you may, you know, you start uh, having hair thinning, you'll have a lot of nutritional deficiencies, um, you know, you will feel all the time, uh, you'll have a lot of muscle cramps because of the potassium and sodium deficiencies 
at the same time it can cause a lot of irritability because uh, you know your nutrients are not being absorbed they're not being digested so it affects your uh, you know brain health along with uh, a lot more side effects so make sure if you want to lose weight you have to resort to something that is consistent something that you can follow throughout your lifetime and something that com comes with zero side effects so most of us feel that if we if we lose weight or if we fall in a certain bmi category that makes us healthy uh, no this is not true because uh, many researchers you know have compared if we compare the indian population with the non indian population so uh, you know a non indian man may have a bmi of 29 but he may be far more healthier than someone than an indian who has a bmi of 22 so why is it so because it's very important that we calculate the muscle mass so even if i may be uh, you know following in a bmi category of 29 and 30 and above but i have a good muscle mass that makes me healthy if i fall into a bmi category of 21 22 to what i have a high body fat percentage that still makes me unhealthy so bmi is a outdated marker health indicator and uh, we need to focus on other health indicators like your digestion so if i'm someone who wakes up in the morning fresh full of energy i am able to pass my motions my stools uh, you know i have no issues with uh, gastric problem that i ha i don't have acidity issues i don't have bloating i don't have swelling on my body i don't have hair fall you know i don't have hair thinning i have a clear skin i don't have acne issues no pimple issues i don't have any pms related issues so if i uh, you know if these symptoms are absent in me yes then i am healthy even though my bmi falls in a higher category so i would like so i would like to end this video by saying that stay away from crash diets i promise you to lose a lot of weight in a short span of time and aim at losing weight at a slower pace and keeping it off over time so this was all about dieting myths and facts hope you like the video if you still have any questions for us do write in the comment section below i'll see you next time with something more interesting till then take care bye bye